All right, this ought to be good. Uh, right now we got a, uh, we got Steve Shives and there was another. He, what's he? He wants to blame the uh, you know the school shooting in Georgia, Pat, Pat Apalachee High School shooting in Georgia, on the AR-15. Obviously, so let's let's see what this guy's got to say. I mean, it's ought to be good. There was another school shooting here in the United States this past week. This one was in Winder, Georgia, at Appalachie High School. This past Wednesday, a 14-year-old student at Appalachie High School entered the school with an AR-style rifle, killed two students and two teachers, and shot and wounded seven other people, six students and a teacher, and reports also indicate that two other students were injured in other ways besides being shot. This was the 45th school shooting in the United States in the year 2024, and the deadliest school shooting in the United States so far in the year 2024. And according to the Gun Violence Archive, which defines a mass shooting as an event where four or more people are shot, this was the 385th mass shooting in the United States so far this year. These things... Shooting here in the United States this past week. Things happen so often, and I've made videos about school shootings and mass shootings and the gun violence and gun death problem in the United States so many times over the years that every time I sit down and get ready to do another one, I have to ask myself, what am I going to say this time? What am I going to talk about this time that I haven't said? dozens of times before. And I thought that this time what I would do, at least to get into this, is to tell you a story from my own life. Now, it's nothing all that lurid. I have never been involved in a school shooting or a mass shooting. I am not a survivor or a witness to any event like that. Thankfully, I'm grateful for that. But I come from a family that has a lot of guns. My father has a lot of guns and had a lot of guns when I was growing up. And his father had a lot of guns when he was, you know, throughout his life, really. I'm in my grandfather's house right now. A lot of you who watch my videos, especially, you know, the ones that I've made over the last four years or so, you occasionally you'll comment, oh, your house, it looks like a grandma's house. And that's because it was my grandma's house and my grandfather's house. I called them pap and granny, my paternal grandparents. They lived here. They raised my father here. Pap died over 20 years ago. Granny died four years ago in January of 2020. And around four years ago, in starting around September of 2020, I moved here because my wife and I split up, eventually got divorced, and I moved from where we lived together to here. And that's where I've been ever since. And I've redecorated a little bit. I've got my movies back there and my, you know, various things that are mine, pictures on the wall and stuff. But a lot of the house remains the way it looked when Pap and Granny were alive and when they lived here. My bedroom is the room where my Pap slept. That was his room. Okay, And in that room, there's a gun cabinet. And that gun cabinet is empty now. It would almost certainly be empty now, regardless of whether or not the story I'm about to tell you ever happened because I am not a gun person. I don't like guns. I don't want guns in my house. So even if there had been guns in that cabinet when I came here to live, they would not be here now. But it just so happens that by the time I moved in, that gun cabinet had been empty for many, many, many years. In the last few years of his life, my grandfather, Pap, developed emphysema. 
and he had been a smoker. He smoked for 30 years. He did eventually quit, but by the time he quit, it was too late. I mean, he, he had already done the damage to his lungs and eventually he developed emphysema and it became quite serious in his final years. He needed to be on oxygen and eventually he lost his mobility. That was not fun for him because in his retirement up until his health became too deteriorated to do this, after he retired, he and Granny loved to travel. They would travel all across the United States and they loved taking trips. They loved going out to places. They were very active in their retirement. And then as Pap's health got worse and worse, they couldn't do that anymore. And as it became clear to him that this was going to be his life for the final stage of it, he would get depressed. And Granny began to worry about having guns in the house. So she asked my father to come and get the guns, which he did, without questioning it, without arguing. In fact, my father, who is a very pro-gun guy, also believed that it was for the best to take the guns out of the house, to remove any possibility that my grandfather in his depression, in his despair over the light dimming in his life and his world getting smaller and smaller, that, that he would do something drastic, that he would choose to end his own life using one of those guns. They took those guns out. They removed the risk of that. Okay. Because they understood. Whether they ever thought of it in this way or expressed it in this way, they understood that to have a gun in your house is to place yourself and everyone else who lives in that house or comes to that house at risk. And I know... Okay, that's bullshit, okay? This is why you practice gun safety. This is why... You teach anyone in the house, especially children, that this is a gun and this isn't a tool. I mean, that this is a gun and this isn't a toy. Sorry, my damn fucking mouth. This, this is something you need to teach everyone in the house about is gun safety, to be responsible with guns, to, to only use them against another human being if you have to, to not play with the gun, to learn at least the four rules of gun safety, at least the four main ones. There's, all guns are always loaded, don't point the gun at anything that you're not supposed to point at, keep your hands off the trigger until you're ready to shoot, and know your target what's beyond it. That, those are the four main roles. You can add on roles like, oh, weapon retention, keep it in a safe, um, train, yeah, you can add on roles to it, but those are like... The, the four main roles. Every, I swear to God, every time someone makes the, you're more, you're more, uh, you're more in danger with a gun than a weapon. I, I just think this person doesn't know about gun safety. This person doesn't know about being responsible with a gun, responsible gun ownership. This, this, this person doesn't know that the gun is there to protect you, not to endanger you. So Steve Shives, okay, I guess it's understandable that he wants to take guns out of his house from a suicidal victim, but he completely has a shit take that he goes, oh, you're more in danger with guns. I mean, that's that's stupid. Um, whether or not it was the right decision or not, I, I guess that's up in the air, but don't act like, don't be dishonest, Steve, and act like if you have guns in your house, you're in greater danger. I mean, no. This is why you learn gun safety. Sorry. <coughs> Fucking cough. This is why you learn gun safety. Gun responsibility. So only the intruder gets harmed by your guns. Well, which would be you using them. Of course, guns don't use themselves. And not anyone innocent. That's... That's how you're supposed to look at guns. A lot of people rationalize owning guns and say, I have a gun for my protection. I have a gun in my house to protect myself and to pr protect my family and protect, protect my home. But yeah, why not? That's what guns can be used to do to protect your loved ones and you. 
not just be a sitting duck. You know, for you to not just be a sitting duck and to die or worse at the hands of an intruder. Okay, Steve? But statistically speaking, the truth is, if you have a gun in your house, it is most likely to harm someone in your house. What statistic sheet? What statistic, Steve? God, my mouth is not working today. What statistics say, oh, if you have a gun in your house, you're more likely to die? I mean, come on, that's that's bullshit. I've looked at those statistics, and they all they all they all were bullshit. You know, they didn't they didn't involve any input on responsible gun ownership or gun safety or what whatnot. The uh, we have over 500 million guns in the U.S. alone, or, or should I say, people have over 5 million years. In, uh, damn it! People have over 500 million guns in the U.S. alone. There, fucking now. Okay, but look. If guns were the problem, everyone would be dead. Because there's more guns than people in the U.S. There's 327 million people in the U.S. at least. And there's at least 500 million guns. If guns were a problem, we'd all be dead. Or a lot of us would be dead. Yet, we're not. So I'm, I'm tired of hearing this bullshit, you know, statement that, oh, you're more in danger with a gun than without a gun. Like, how does that even make sense? It's like, you keep it in a safe, you don't treat it as a toy, you use it only when you need to use it, if you even have to use it at all for self-defense. You... Practice before rules against it. Like, like, how how does this statement even remotely have any coherence to it or logic? I don't understand it because it's a really stupid statement. It doesn't make you safer. Why not? You use it responsibly. Yes, it does, Steve. It puts you at a greater risk. Sure. And my father and my grandmother understood this in my. Pap's case. Yeah, well, look, Steve, if, if you have a suicidal victim, okay, I guess it could make sense to take away the guns. Or at least put them out of reach. But that's not the case of everyone. Not everyone's suicidal with guns. Not everyone is homicidal with guns. Some people are responsible gun owners. What, what do you know? So if you want to take away the guns from a suicidal victim, okay, that might make somewhat sense but don't act like everyone should just not have guns because oh they're gonna kill themselves or someone else no and by the way there's other ways to commit suicide too I mean, okay if you want to eliminate one fine but you know just saying they took those guns out of there yeah the shooter of the Appalachian high school mass shooting this 14 year old kid who committed this crime. The gun he used was purchased for him by his father as a Christmas present this past year. A 14-year-old kid with an AR-style rifle. What the hell does a 14-year-old kid need? with an assault weapon. Okay, Steve, assault weapons is an illegitimate term, okay? It just means any gun the politicians don't like. It's not a legitimate term, it's like, oh, it's an assault weapon. Dude, all weapons are made to assault, to some degree. They're fucking weapons. Like, like if you want a legitimate term and for guns that includes the word assault, it's assault rifle, which is any Rifle that fires an intermediate cartridge that um, has select fire on it, meaning it can do, you know, slash full auto, meaning it can do like semi automatic in some other settings. Semi automatic in burst, semi automatic in full auto, semi automatic in both burst fire and full auto fire, you know, burst automatic and fully automatic. That's what assault rifle means, and, or I heard there are some guns that are just full auto only, but whatever, at least some form of other than some auto fire that's automatic, you know, other than some automatic, full auto only, or burst fire only, or both, or in addition to automatic, or just down only. That's what assault rifle means. 
I digress. But that's an, that's a legitimate term that concern. That, that's a legitimate term that can turn. That's a legitimate term that contains the word assault, not assault weapons. That's that's not a legitimate term. That's just charged politically as fuck. Why does a kid need an assault rifle? Well, wait, 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 it's not an assault rifle, by the way. AR-15 is not an assault rifle. It's some automatic only civilian version of the M16 for a while. But anyways, why does a kid need an AR-15? Well, I kind of think that's up to the kid, the teenager, the minor, whatever. You know, you don't get to say, oh, why does a kid need to make me? Well, it's their decision to have a gun. Okay, <clears throat> just like it's adult decision to have a gun. So I think, yeah, technically it's illegal for like someone younger than 18 to like buy a gun. But I don't see what's wrong with having a gun in the house as a teenager, you know, use it responsibly, like with adult supervision, something like that. I don't see why that has to be a charged thing. For a teenager to have a personal weapon, if nothing bad's happening with it, Steve, I, I don't understand that. I don't understand your views on that. What possible justification could there be for a teenager, for a child? Teenager isn't a child. They're a minor, but okay. To have that kind of a weapon. That kind of a weapon? Are you implying... There are certain weapons that it's okay to own and not own for a teenager because that sounds like you're getting into gun control, which you are a big gun control advocate. It was purchased for him by his father. And that by itself, if those were just the facts of the story, that by itself would be bad enough because there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse to buy a gun for a person. Oh yeah, okay, Steve. There is no excuse to purchase that kind of a weapon or any kind of firearm for a 14 year old child. Okay, so I guess people can't own guns until they're adults. Even if you have one, buy one for you under adult supervision. Even if you're taught the world's a gun safety. Even if you're a responsible gunner, I guess you just gotta wait till you're an adult to buy a gun, according to Steve. And he, as a gun control advocate, he probably doesn't want even that, so. When I went hunting with my father, when I was 14, yeah. I handled guns. I yeah. was taught the safe, proper way to handle guns. My which, is supposed, which is what's supposed to happen. My father made very sure that I respected and had a, an appropriate level of fear of the gun and that I only pointed it at something I was planning on shooting. Okay. I did not own a gun. The guns that I used when I went hunting with my father were my father's guns. And that's fine. Or my grandfather's guns in some cases. I didn't. You get to choose the ownership model of the guns on premises, on your household, on your private property, whatever. Whether it be exactly technically your guns or someone else's on the property's guns, whatever. You get to choose, they get to choose. It doesn't have to be your gun and it doesn't have to be their gun not own a gun. It never came up. My father never said, would you like your own gun? My father knew that 14 years old is too young to have your own gun. The guns were his. Okay, well, I mean, in your father's household, I guess it works out that way. It doesn't mean it needs to work that way in other people's households said, oh, all the guns belong to the parents and the kid doesn't own any of them. It, it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, if they feel it works better that way, fine. But it doesn't need to be that way for anyone else. <coughs> because he was the adult. Okay. I was the kid. All right. And I used them with his supervision. Yeah, that's good. So, a father buying an AR-15 or an AR-style rifle for his 14-year-old son is bad enough if that was the only issue. What makes it worse is that this 14-year-old kid who carried out this shooting, who murdered four people, had previously 
been investigated by the FBI for making threats online about wanting to carry out a school shooting, about wanting to shoot up a middle school. His father knew this. His father knew that his son had been questioned about threatening to carry out a school shooting. His father knew that his son had made these threats and was having these thoughts. And after that, after he knew that his son had threatened to carry out a school shooting and had been questioned by law enforcement as a result of those threats, after that, he got him an AR-style rifle for a Christmas present. Okay, I, I gotta say, if that's the case, that's really bad. Like, if you have, if you have someone that's known to be violent or could have violent tendencies or makes violent threats, yeah, absolutely don't get him a gun. But that's not the way every teenager or every person is, Steve. And everyone's gonna make threats online about killing people and then receive a gift from whoever of a gun, okay? That's not the case with everyone. So, you're pushing this narrative like, oh, since this guy was irresponsible with it, that's just a way it should never ever happen. That's dumb. And as a result of that, <clears throat> the father of this 14-year-old shooter has also been arrested and charged with crimes related to this school shooting. We have a lot of people in this country who think of themselves as responsible gun owners, and yeah. you will never convince me that there is any such thing. Okay, well then you're dumb. I'm sorry, Steve. You are dumb. If you think there's no such thing as a responsible gunner who, when they use a gun, against another human being, it's only in self-defense, it's justified, they, they, they're responsible, they're safe, they go to the range, they do tar they, you know, for, for traditional shooting, they have sports shooting, they're a collector. If, if you don't think any of that exists, then you're, you're an idiot that wants to deny reality and wants to deny that there's smart people with guns. There's good people with guns, there's responsible people with guns. If, if you... If you say something like, oh, you can't convince me, then okay, well, then you want to be dumb, then. You, you want to be willfully ignorant, you want to be willfully stupid, you don't want to acknowledge reality. Okay, fine, fine, fine. There are more responsible gun owners. I would like to think of my father as one of those. There are people who do take precautions, who do keep their guns in a locked safe, as my father does. If you noticed, my grandfather didn't keep his guns in a locked safe. They were in a cabinet with a turnkey that was, was child's play to get into. My father okay. keeps his guns in a locked safe. You need to have That's good. the combination to get in. Yeah. If he's not using them for something, that's where they are. Yeah. I would like to think that gun owners like that, gun owners that store their weapons safely, gun owners that abide by the laws, gun owners that submit to background checks and registration, gun owners that use trigger locks and other safety devices, they are safer gun owners. Yeah. And I'm, I'm grateful for them. Given the circumstances, given how many guns there are in private hands in this country, I'm grateful for safer gun owners. But the truth is there's no such thing as a safe gun owner because having a gun in your house is an inherently unsafe thing. Look, Steve, I will say this. Owning a gun, <clears throat> it does have a risk, okay? The gun's not going to get off the table and or out of the safe and shoot you, but it is a risk to own a gun when you're using it, okay? Or when someone could get to it. Yeah, there's always going to be a risk. It's a gun. It's inherently lethal. But only if people use it. And only if people are responsible that you really have to worry about this tool. If people are perfectly responsible and your gun's in a safe that's bolted down to the floor or wall or bolt. <clears throat> why you got to worry like that? Why you got to fear monger act like there's no such thing as a safe gun owner? It's just not going to work out on your gun. Why, why do you have to do that? Because that's really dumb and disingenuous and illegitimate if you do that. Like, there's no such thing as safe ownership. There's no such thing as safe gunners. It's, it just doesn't exist. Owning guns is just dangerous. That's all there is to it. You just shouldn't do it. That's, that's dumb, Steve. I'm sorry, but it's dumb. <coughs> and that is the problem. Yeah. 
there are more guns in private possession in the United States than there are people. We don't actually know precisely how many guns there are in private possession in the United States because the gun lobby has successfully made it incredibly difficult to find that out. The gun lobby... Yeah, and that's good. They, nobody has the right to know about people's guns. <clears throat> Man, this throat's being a bitch today. Nobody... The estimates are 500 million at gun ownerships from various groups. I, I'm gonna have to put some sources in the description or something, maybe. But it's okay for people to not know how many guns people own or who owns the guns because that's not your business. <clears throat> It's your bus it's your gun, it's your business about own owning it. And this whole blaming the gun lobby for that is just getting really old. You know, like blaming the NRA for that, that's getting really old. If people don't let the government don't want to let the government know that they even own even one gun and that's their prerogative, that's their right. And whether it's like the gun lobby that is protecting people against unjust laws that would otherwise make their gun ownership transparent to the world or to the country. At least, I, I'm i tired of hearing them blame for just the general essence of owning a gun. I'm, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of gun lobby being blamed for that. Bobby has successfully poisoned the minds of so many gun owners in this country with anti- Oh my god, they poisoned the minds of what gun owners already know about responsible gun ownership and owning that and keeping it a secret or private or only when trusted people know you own a gun. <gasps> they so poisoned their minds. Oh my god. No, Steve. They already knew this stuff. Thai government paranoia. Yeah. That they have convinced them that any kind of national database to register who owns what guns and where the guns are is an intolerable imposition on their liberty because that's just the first step to confiscation. It is. That's just the government making a list of who has the guns, so when they finally decide to come and take the guns, they'll know who to come and take the guns from. Yeah, Steve, that's the case, okay? If they know who has the guns, they know who to take the guns away from. Duh. And, you know, <clears throat> there are countries like the UK and Australia that Make it so you have to register your guns and you have to be transparent about you owning one to the government. And Australia happened to have a mandatory gun buyback back in like 1996 where you had to give up your guns. And they knew who owned them, okay? So stop acting like reg registration isn't about confiscation because it is, or at least it very well could be. God. So it's really difficult to reckon exactly how many guns there are out there. Yeah, that's fine. And that never made sense to me because part of the rationale for allowing people to own so many guns is that it keeps the government from bossing everybody around, right? Yeah. If people want to use them to protect their liberty, then yeah, guns do protect people from against the government, boss them around against the government tyranny. They just lounge around like a, a lot of people in the U.S. are now and don't really use them to fight back. Then, of course, the guns are useless. But if they do use them to fight back, then they'd be indeed very useful and people would indeed be more free than they are today. You need to have the gun to protect yourself, not just from criminals, but from, from government tyranny. Yeah, duh. That's that's the idea in the, in the minds of a lot of people, and especially right-wingers and... and Honestly, some left-wingers, too, I, I am embarrassed to admit. You know, you have the gun. Oh, right-wingers, left-wingers, if you're a gun owner and you're a smart gun owner, you know this is good to own for protection against thugs. You know, street thugs and state thugs. So, Steve, what are you trying to say here? Guns to protect yourself from the government. So, if guns are an effective protection from the government and an effective deterrent from the government coming in and messing with you, why would you be afraid of the government having a database of who owns what guns? Wouldn't that just be a list of people that the government would know not to mess with? <coughs> okay, sorry. Fucking cough. I'm ruining these entrances. Anyways. Steve, the government knowing who owns the guns makes it easier to take them away. Okay, yeah. Not, not to mess with. Okay, yeah. I guess they could 
no, this person is potentially a threat to them taking away the gun since they know they own a gun. But why put a target on your back when you can be in the shadows and have them not know whether you own a gun or not? Why be in, Why put a target on your back? That puts a target on your back them knowing that you own a gun. <clears throat> Where it is and what type of gun it is. <clears throat> Sorry. That puts a fucking target on your back. And to have the advantage... The element of surprise over the government, you shouldn't have a target on your back. That's like the whole point of gun ownership anonymity is not having a target on your fucking back. If you register your guns, you put a target on your back and now they know who to go after, okay? And they could go out, they could break into your safe and take your guns while you're away because they know they're there. And they know what address to go to. And, you know, whatever way government might take away guns, they can do that. They can do that when you're there. They can do it when you're not there. They can try it. Why take that risk? Why put a target on your back? Why not stay anonymous about you owning guns? <clears throat> if that's the way that worked. But anyway, the fact remains there are more guns than people in the United yeah. States, but we don't know exactly how many there are. That's and fine. that is the problem. No, it's not. A lot of times, the rhetoric around gun control, gun regulation, focuses on keeping guns out of the wrong hands. Which doesn't fucking work. The criminals get the damn guns anyway. They steal them from a gun store. They steal them from homes. They steal them, period. They even steal them from freaking military and cops. Cops and military soldiers, you know, military bases or police stations and cops and even... Soldiers under person, I believe, or whatever, personal position, whatever, have had their guns taken away by criminals. And those and those are the people that are supposed to only supposed to be the ones that own guns. Are the government, the cops, the military, and yet they get their guns stolen by the criminals or the people who aren't, aren't supposed to own guns. And guess what? There's this thing called the black market where criminals can get guns whether they're stolen from or not to be on the black market. And some cops and soldiers have willingly stole, some cops and soldiers have willingly sold their guns, as in the, the state's guns, illegally to criminals. So their illegal sales, their illegal collusive government sales of guns to criminals. Also, a thing called straw purchasing exists. So if a criminal is ineligible to be able to buy a gun, they have someone buy the gun for them. And criminals get guns that way. It, th does it really seem like gun control is going to stop criminals from getting guns based on those fr three methods of getting guns for criminals alone, Steve? Do you really think that's going to work? Because it don't, it don't work at all. And I would love to see more action on that. I would love to see laws and policies and programs <clears throat> that are much more rigorous and much stronger and much more active and much more effective in keeping guns out of the wrong hands not gonna happen Steve it's not gonna happen it doesn't work the criminals always find a fucking way to get guns it, I'm sorry I'm, I'm tired of having to make this argument in fact a lot of gun owners are tired of having to make this argument that oh gun control doesn't work criminals don't obey laws this only affects the law abiding it's the policies the criminals scoot around the policies or even if they can't scoot around the policies and get in trouble for breaking them the damage is already done we're we're tired of explaining this. We're tired. Apparently, it still needs to be explained in 2024 that gun control does not work. It doesn't work. Apparently, that still needs to be explained, but I, I digress. Okay, let's go on. I think that would be a great improvement on our situation. Nope, not going to shoot. But that will not solve the underlying problem. The underlying problem is the guns. Not just... Okay, let's go on. Just the guns that find their way to the wrong hands, but the existence of this massive private arsenal in the United States. Oh my god. Is he really blaming an inanimate object for gun violence or criminals of guns? Come on, Steve. Come on. It's a tool. It's an inanimate object. It takes a person to make it, and it per takes a person to use it. For it, even, for it to even do anything, okay? Guns are man-made objects that take people to make and use them for them to even have any effect on anyone. Why are you blaming them for human violence or human suffering or human death? Or why are you blaming it for that? It's the person who uses the gun unjustly you blame. 
for the crime. Because they're the ones using it. What a fuck. <clears throat> and any notion that guns make people evil or is stupid or trigger happy is just stupid itself. Because the gun is just a tool. It doesn't make you anything. If you're a violent person, you're already violent to begin with before the gun reaches your hands. Before you pick it up. That's not the gun's doing. That's not the gun's fault. That's on you. God damn it. And the only way to solve that problem... Oh jeez, what's here for? ...is for the people who have those guns... ...to part with those guns. And a lot of okay. people... Okay, I, I, old argument, but still good. Okay, getting rid of your guns because other people misuse theirs is like castrating yourself because your neighbor has too many kids. I'm sorry. I mean, an argument's been used so many times, but it's a true argument, so I'm going to use it. <clears throat> like, what fucking good does it make to give up your guns for criminals using their guns to victimize people? <clears throat> you a peaceful owner. <coughs> sorry. Coughing like, coughing like a mofo in this video. What good does you, a responsible gun owner, giving up your guns do for someone who's an irresponsible, violent fuck gun owner not giving up their guns and misusing their guns? Notice how I said not giving up for the irresponsible gun owner. You know why? Because they're not going to give up their guns. They don't do that. Criminals don't give up their guns. They don't. I'm sorry. But it's a fact that criminals aren't going to give up their guns, even if you give up yours. That makes no sense. Why should they? They're criminals. They break the law. They want to keep breaking the law. They want to keep their guns. So they're going to keep on keeping on keeping their guns. So they act like people need to give up their guns that are responsible to with guns so the criminals don't have them is just dumb. People would say, but hey, I'm a responsible gun owner. I would never use my gun for something like that. I would never shoot an innocent person with my gun. Yeah, that, and that's true. I would never carry out a school shooting with my gun. <coughs> that's probably true. Yeah? So why do you got a problem? That's probably true. Mm-hmm. But the thing about a lot of those guns that find their way into the wrong hands is that before they ended up in the wrong hands, at some point they passed through the right hands. Okay, why do you do air quotes for right hands? There's no air quoting for any of that, Steve. These are objectively the right hands. There's no, oh, allegedly, or, no, there's none of that. And not all guns that are owned by good people make it into bad people's hands. Not all good people have their guns stolen. Otherwise, nobody would own a gun. No good person would own a gun. Only the criminals would own the guns. Because every good person gets their guns stolen. Uh-uh. That's not how it works. How many guns that ended up being used in a crime? Or ended up being used by a person to kill themselves? Or to threaten somebody? Or to commit an active mass murder, how many of those guns, before they got into the hands of that killer, belonged to a responsible gun owner? It okay, I'd have to look at stats on that, but, you know, just because you're a responsible gun owner doesn't mean your gun's going to be taken and end up in the hands of a thug, okay? That's, that's all you can really say to this. They act like every gun is going to be fucking stolen and in a, flat in a thug's hands is just dumb. I know I'm using that word a lot dumb, but it is. It applies. And not all crime guns or illegal guns or whatever, not all illegal guns are necessarily stolen, so there goes your argument there too. If you consider yourself a responsible gun owner and yeah. your gun, despite your best intentions and despite your best <clears throat> efforts to keep it safe and to make sure everybody in your home knew how to handle it and knew how to respect it, how would you feel as a self-identifying responsible gun owner if, despite all of that, your gun was used to take someone else's life? Okay, if that happened, I'd feel like shit. But that doesn't necessarily mean it will happen. 
I mean, I'd feel like shit because someone not only stole my gun, but a criminal used it for a heinous act. I'd feel like shit that a criminal stole my gun and used it for a heinous act. I wouldn't feel like that's on me. I feel like that's on the criminal because the criminal did the crime. And my gun's being blamed for it. My gun's being used for it. I'd I feel like that over that. Not throwing guns in the first place. I'm not going to trip myself throwing guns. How would you feel about that? Would you just completely blow it off? Would you say, well, it wasn't my responsibility. I did what I was supposed to do. Or would you have some pang of responsibility knowing that if your gun had not been there, if you had not had that gun, then the crime that gun was used to commit would not have happened. Okay, if you did all your responsible steps, I doubt your gun would even get stolen, Steve. So it's kind of weird you're trying to pin this on being responsible and yet your gun still gets stolen. How would you be responsible for what another person does? People get their guns stolen all the time. Do they feel like crap over why the flug does to steal their gun? And um, what happens, you know, the fact that they even got their gun stolen, the fact they even got used by flug, should they feel guilty? I don't think so. I mean, if their gun wasn't security was, if their gun wasn't secured, maybe they should feel guilty and bad that their gun got stolen and they could have made it so it wouldn't, but feel guilty as if they're responsible for the crime? No, they shouldn't feel that way because they didn't do it. There are 40,000 gun-related deaths in this country every year. And yeah. the fee and it's been about that level. And most gun deaths are suicide, not murder, suicide. So most of these gun deaths are people killing themselves with guns, not other people, not murdering other people. So the most gun deaths weren't even caused as a result of someone being a threat to another person with a gun. And yet they're acting like States are acting like all gun deaths are gun murders. You know, very few of them are gun murders. And homicide includes deadly force just slash justifiable self-defense. Just justifiable homicide. So this acting of like all gun deaths are gun murders is just dumb. Once again, there's no word still. For many, many, many <laughs> years. Sometimes it's a little bit lower, sometimes it's a little bit higher, but it always averages out to around 40,000 gun-related deaths every year. A lot of those, most years, approximately half, are suicides. People use a gun to take their own life. Yeah, so there, this isn't the gun crime problem since most people who died to the guns are killing, uh, was a result of them killing themselves with the guns. What if you are a responsible gun owner? Yeah. And your child ends their own life using your gun, using the gun that you kept in your house, that you thought was safe, that you thought they knew how to handle. How would you feel about that? Oh, look, Steve, look. You're acting like, you're acting like it, it just happened. It would just happen if it, that, you know, you'll have someone commit suicide with a gun in your house, with your gun, or you're acting like it just happened, like these things just can't be prevented. Like you're just gonna be able to get in that gun safe or get to that gun no matter what and kill themselves or someone else. No, that's, that's not how it works, Steve. If someone's feeling suicidal, you obviously make sure your guns are locked up. And they can't get to them and they get help. That's what you do, you don't just act like, oh, I need to get rid of the gun. No, no, you don't. If you're smart, you don't. <clears throat> and again, you might say, well, that would never happen. And you're probably right. Okay, so Most people who own guns will probably never have to deal with that. Especially if you keep it safe and locked up and you teach your children to respect it. Yeah. You'll probably never have to deal with that. Mm hmm But some people will. Yeah. It will happen to somebody. It happens to a lot of somebody's every year. Yeah. A lot of those people didn't properly secure their guns or deal with suicide properly, deal with issues properly. So you acting like, oh, you just shouldn't own a gun. That's dumb. And it could be you. And why? 
would you allow that risk to exist at all? Here we go, more guilt tripping and acting like, oh yeah, it's just gonna happen, it's a risk inherently, for okay. Look, be responsible, and that shouldn't ever happen, or probably won't happen. And even if it does, act like, only the gun was just a mistake, that's, um, you gotta be responsible, you gotta take risks, you gotta own a gun despite all that. If there was something you could do to make your child's life that much safer, wouldn't you do it? And that's what you have the gun safety for, Steve. Use your brain, please. Especially if it wouldn't really cost you anything. And you, would, you might say, well, it would cost me my gun. Exactly. It wouldn't really cost you anything. Because as I mentioned, Okay, well then you're at the you're at the mercy of a criminal who breaks into your house. Oh, because I didn't want anyone in my house to get harmed by my gun, even though I'm responsible with it. All because of that, you're putting yourself at that risk for that criminal to kill you or do worse with you. God, Steve, this is this is stupid. Mentioned earlier, statistically speaking, the people who are most likely to be shot by a gun in your house are people in your house. Nope you and your family. This fantasy that a lot of people have that they use as an excuse for owning a gun, this fantasy of, well, I'll be able to protect myself, I'll be able to protect my family. Up to an estimate two million people a year do protect their families and themselves with guns. Why is this a fantasy to you? That almost never happens. You're preparing for a conflict that will almost certainly never come. Okay, then it's still real then. So there's a chance still applies. And in doing so, you are putting your family and yourself at a higher risk. Nope. And why are you doing that? Because people want to be protected, Steve. Criminals exist. Breakings exist. Murders and rapes exist. That's why. What sense does that make? Uh, I don't want to die or be violated. <laughs> it's... it's not that difficult to find out the combination to a gun safe. Which is why you have like multiple locks or look, actually, screw that. I mean, forget about that. You know, the most common way criminals get into gun safes are through forced entry as well as hauling the state off if, uh, hauling the safe off if, it's, if it isn't bolted down. You do know that, right? Right, Steve? It's not about like guessing the can be. It's about just breaking that thing open with an angle grinder or a crowbar or, you know, pry bar, whatever, and getting in. That's what it's about. Not this whole, just the combo, and it's not impossible to keep a combo safe, Steve. So, whatever. I'm telling you. Sure you are. If you want to find out what the combination to the gun safe in your house is, and you are, say, a kid in that house, it's not that difficult to find out. There are different locking mechanisms you can have for a gun safe, Steve. Okay, you can have the key, you can have the buttons, you can have, you know, a die pad, you can have the, the dial. You, there's, there's other options to make sure the safe is safe. <clears throat> and if you happen to be a kid who has bad intentions, a kid who is troubled, a kid who is depressed, it's not that hard to open that safe and lay your hands on one of those guns and use it to do something awful. And at that point, it won't matter how careful the parent was who put that gun in there. It won't matter how noble the intentions are of the person who brought that gun into the house. All that will matter is something terrible is going to happen that could not have happened if that gun wasn't there and there was no reason, no sane, logical reason for that gun to be there at all. Yeah. Donald Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, made a comment on the Appalachia High School shooting and he said, well, you know, these things are just a fact of life, which has become the nihilistic standard Republican talking point on this issue. Hey, what are we going to do? It's just part of living in a free society. Nothing you can do about it. J.D. Vance also said, you know, we need to take steps, not gun control, but other steps, to protect our kids for when these psychos 
target our kids. And in the case of this shooting, the psycho was one of the kids. So it makes sense to have teachers be armed so someone uttering armed campus police officers can defend people. It makes sense to have armed people to defend. It makes sense to have good armed people to defend against bad armed people. Steve, yes, people should do that kind of thing. Why are you so against it? Was a teenage student at the school. Vance makes it sound like like there's these, these marauding gangs of people that are just sweeping the nation and committing all these mass shootings. No, it's us. That's when you say it's, that, and not everyone's a school shooter, Steve. It's us. Okay. We are the psychos. And not just because of those of us who commit these mass shootings, who carry out these acts of violence, but because we maintain the conditions and in many cases, we jealously and vigorously and aggressively defend the conditions that allow these sorts of things to happen as frequently as they do. More frequently in the United States than in any other comparable nation in the world, and it's not even close. Uh, I doubt it, but and who's... And you acting like... Fault is that? It's our fault. No, it's the criminal's fault, Steve. They do the crime. They should do the time. Don't blame innocent gun owners for what other fucking people do. Because that, that's not how it works. You don't get to blame people for stuff that's other people's fault. I'm sorry, but you don't. And of course people want to defend the right to own guns. It's a fucking right. People need to be safe. Make sense to defend it. Don't guilt trip people for that, Steve. It's not going to work. As a nation. Okay. It's our fault. Nope. Try again. It's our fault because we allow it to happen over and over and over again. And it's our fault because we never do anything about it. Don't blame me. People suggested armed teachers for years. And fucking just being armed in general, that's a solution. Don't collectively blame people for the acts of criminals. Not going to work. Especially the thing that we should. And public policy is responsible for these shootings, not, oh, they own gun. Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, should be doing the one thing that we absolutely must do. Oh, jeez, that's gotta be good. Which is to choose our lives and the lives of our children and the lives of our friends and family and loved ones. To choose the people of this country over the guns. What a, what a moron. People do choose the lives of children and families and innocent people by wanting to own guns, by wanting to keep people safe, by, by wanting people to be armed to protect themselves and others. They are choosing their lives in relation to guns. Why can't you see that? To let the guns go. No. Criminal sure as hell ain't gonna let the guns though. I guess we better keep ours to protect our, protect them, for protect ourselves from them. I guess that's what has to be done, Steve. I wonder sometimes if we'll ever do that. I hope we do. I really hope we do. I hope we don't. <laughs> but every time something like this happens, I find myself asking, What it's gonna take. Ah, alright, Vay. That was. That video was something, folks. It was dumb. That word again, but it still applies. I'm gonna keep using It was ignorant. It was charged. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, don't listen to Steve Shy. Don't, don't, don't listen to him. Keep, keep your guns, folks. Keep them. Bye.